Hi guys. To today's biblical moment comes to you um, from one of my favorite stories. I will tell you why it's my favorite story. Because um, I was guided to help an 11th dimensional angel at one point in my life. And I had uh, told her this story and it made her cry. Like it made her cry. Because finally, the true meaning of the words had reached her heart. And she said, well, that's not what they teach us at all, is it? Yeah, and here I am teaching an 11th dimensional angel. Yeah. Like, you know, basically on this side of the world, she looks like a human being. But uh, on the spiritual side, she's an 11th dimensional angel. And here I am teaching her the Bible. So she doesn't know how much the story means to me after I shared it with her. But um, this is why it means so much. So basically, today we're going to talk to you about Jacob, Esau, and Isaac. And we're going to talk to you about, on the surface, what this story looks like. Okay? On the surface... This is the story of a brother who cheated his brother out of his inheritance by tricking his blind and feeble father into mistakenly identifying him for his brother and giving him his inheritance. So for all intents and purposes, on the surface, this story sounds like crap. Like absolute crap like the type of crap that we live every day but it sounds like crap yes on the surface if you think about it for just a minute you know just just take a moment to think how fucked up that sounds excuse my language i'm sorry can't help it all right my brother cheated me out of my inheritance by pretending to be me and my blind father gave my inheritance to my brother Ugh. how horrible that sounds on the surface yes Okay, well, <laughs> the meaning is then lost because a surface level value of that story is nothing. That's just the shadow. That's just the outline of the true meaning of this story. And that's what's so beautiful about the Bible is that it takes myths and teaches an illiterate public. Now we have changed. We have grown. We obviously have become more educated. Okay. But we're talking 2000 years ago where they couldn't go to school and only the people that studied this could go to school and they had to go through an intercession to get to this place. And so these people were then in charge of teaching illiterates through myths and stories. And that's everything that the Bible is. Myths and stories. So if we take these myths and stories and we turn them into historical facts and we see the surface level, can you see how much we're missing? Let me give you the analogy of what that means. You see, your body is the outermost illusion and the very last shell of what you are. It is 1%. Of the 99% of everything else. And so by taking the surface level value of any story and not understanding what it's truly conveying, you're doing the exact same thing every human being does when they forget their true nature as spirit first, then, then everything else comes second because, you know, even our body is last. So this story is popular. And those of you who haven't heard it, you know, or don't understand it, you know, you've probably heard me say it. I don't care. It's up to you to kind of remind yourself of this. What this story was giving you was the guide so that you can pull anything out of thin air. You heard me? Now, disguised as a mythical story that looks like pure injustice. And if I just looked on the surface, it would absolutely be injustice, wouldn't it? You know, my brother got over on me. Ugh, happens all the time, yes? Okay, it's not what the story's about. 
You see, in this case, the blind father represents your brain. Your blind father sits in your skull all day long. It cannot see a thing. It has no idea what is going on. It does not have eyes of its own. It has no hearing of its own. It has no ability to perceive anything else around it except what your senses tell it. This is your blind father. This is your brain. And your brain is fully dependent on what you tell it, how you make it feel, and everything else to create your reality. Okay? It creates your reality based on what you tell it. It has no idea if you're telling the truth. It has no idea if you're lying. It has no idea of anything. It, in fact, it's impartial. It doesn't even care if you're actually this or not. Okay, it's impartial. That's how your brain works. It's completely blind. You cannot see physically with your eyes if a specific part of the back of your brain is not working. Then if that part is damaged, you cannot see. So can you see the interdependence of that relationship? Okay, so the second half of that story is that the brother tricked the father. Sorry, guys, I don't have much time, so it's not going to be a long one. The brother tricked the father into believing that he was his brother to get his inheritance by having him, because he was blind, feel his arm, feel him. So he was not a hairy man, but his brother was a hairy man. So he covered himself in skins that were hairy so that when his blind father felt the pelt, he would feel, you know, some essence of feel like he was touching his son. And that was enough to convince his father to give his brother his inheritance. And what that tells you is, unless you can convince your brain that this is what you are feeling, you can't get anything out of your brain. So do you see how this story is so beautiful? Because if I was taking it from, his, from a surface level value, if I read this as a very ignorant person who has no idea how the Bible is made, how we take myths to teach real life situations, and we're actually teaching you how to pull things out of thin air. That's what this is doing. See, but this part of the story doesn't make sense until you apply it. You see, if I can convince my brain of how something feels and I make it real enough to me, I get my inheritance. That is what the story is about. That's what it's trying to convey. It's teaching you how to pull anything out of your brain by convincing yourself of how it feels. So when you guys hear things like Neville Goddard feeling is the secret, and he tells you, look, the Bible is all that you need to understand everything on earth. He is speaking from experience. He knows how to apply these words and get anything out of thin fair. In fact, he lived that life and showed others how to do it because once he figured out he could do it, he taught everyone else how to do it. Yes? So I am no different than Neville. I am no different than Neville. I applied the words in the Bible, discovered the truth hidden in the myths, and then could see beyond the surface, and now I'm a doer of the word and not just a hypocritical hearer who, when tested, doesn't apply the shit. That's not how I operate. <laughs> no. See, the reason I understand these words like the back of my hand is because it's application, baby. Application, 100%. I understood what it meant. I have to feel something to trick my blind father into giving my inheritance. Once I have my inheritance, all I had to do was trick my blind father. Who is my blind father? Well, my blind father is my brain. 
and as long as my heart can feel something real, I have it. What is what is that saying to you? Be still and know? Be still and feel it and know? Or is it telling you that emotions move your subconscious immediately? There's a lot of deep messages in those stories. A deep, deep message that if I didn't understand what was being said, do you see how fucked up I would think the Bible is? I'd go, oh, that's a story of injustice. And I'd identify with the injustice because that injustice is what we see in the world because that's more easier to accept than the truth that is hidden within the words. Than the truth that is hidden within the words. Like, let that sink in. It is easier for you to believe in injustice than it is to believe in the truth hidden in those words. And that would be why you see a world filled with injustice rather than the fairness of karma and how quickly it pays you that for the goodness that you do. That's why you struggle in the world because you don't understand that what you put out is what you receive and that is not dependent on anyone outside. It's on you to be what you want to receive. It is also on you to see beyond the surface of such words and see beyond what you think is an injustice and see the loophole that is hidden within the truth of those words so that you can pull anything out of thin air. That's why this is one of my favorite stories. Because if I didn't understand what the words meant and applied them, I wouldn't be able to pull anything out of thin air. And then these words would mean nothing to me. It would just, just be a story of injustice, wouldn't it? I'd see the surface that you all see in the outer illusion of this world. That's nothing. It's fake as shit. You know, a projection based on what we unconsciously believe. Come on, people. Look outside. Look outside long enough to see that everything you believe right here is the only thing you're seeing out there. It is up to you to take ownership for what you believe in here because that is the reason that people behave like they do in your world. There is only one first cause and that is you and you must take ownership of that. Ownership. Understand how it works. You can pull anything out of the ethers because you are already everything. And your blind father just needs you to feel it real. Neville wrote a whole book on that story. He called it Feeling is the Secret. A whole book. He called it Feeling is the Secret. So... Do you see when I say that there is ignorance in the world, when they see the surface, they only see the surface and they miss the biggest guideline for their life? That which is, it is already given to you by God. Just fool your, fool your vessel into believing that you have it so you can have it. Behave like you have it. And if you're going to behave like you have it, what are you doing? You're going to stop wanting it, aren't you? You had better let go of your desire, shouldn't you? Because if you have something, do you want it? You have it already. You cannot want it. And if I'm trying to trick my vessel into believing I already have it, does it make sense to hold my desire or does it make sense to give my desire to God so he can give it to me like he already said that he did? That's what these stories are about. That's the beauty of the Bible. That's the beauty that everybody is missing when they judge the surface with their ignorant shit. Because they don't understand the deeper meaning. Do you know why? The deeper meaning is hidden until you apply it in your life. And then you become the evidence of that story. And then the story that was written as a myth will make sense. Honestly, you guys, honestly, sometimes I wonder I should really be, just be a pastor. I should be a really good pastor. Because I love this. Clarity. 
that I can offer you if you stop judging the surface, dig deeper, and see what it's trying to tell you. Because every single one of these myths are written in code that you can apply. And once you apply, you become the evidence of the words you are living in. And then you're going to say, oh my God, I'm alive in the words written in the Bible. This is how I'm alive. These words in the beginning was the word. And finally that comes back full circle. Do you see? Do you see? Can you hear me now? Can you hear the value? Can you hear that? Can you feel it? Can you feel the truth coming back to you? I'm not lying. I'm not lying. My life is its own proof. My life is its own proof. So, as I continue these lectures, I hope that more of you join us. I hope that more of you get interested in what these stories mean. And I hope more than anything that you take this opportunity to make your story your own. Don't use me as evidence. Otherwise, I'm just hearsay. Okay? I'm just bullshit that's out here. It's not until you make this story your own. You can use me as a guide. That's okay. But it's not until you make this story your own that you can say, Oh my God, Cindy, I'm living what you're talking about. I get it. I see it. I see it. I see the meaning of the story. That's what I want. Okay? So please take the moment to hear what I'm saying, feel it real, believe it, and let it go. If you are currently continuing to want and focus on things rather than accepting that they already are, you are the reason you don't have it because you haven't tricked your blind father yet. The vibe that you are after knows you already have it, therefore it is not desiring. So as long as you hold that desire, Okay, you didn't trick your blind father. So when you came dressed up as your brother, in this story, when you came dressed up as your brother, you didn't trick your daddy, did you? Daddy left you X'd out and in the cold and said, hey, how did you, why did you trick me for trying to play off your brother? That's what will happen because your subconscious cannot be fooled. You have to mean it. And you do when you understand these words and you apply them. I promise. I promise you. I want you guys to love this material as much as I do because everything in your life will suddenly become easy. Wouldn't that be awesome? To suddenly not be struggling to show up and life just kind of gives you whatever you want and you know because it's already given you just kind of, you become the vortex. Wouldn't that be awesome? Well, all of you have that potential. The more you study these words, the more you apply, the more you see beyond the surface, this ignorance turns into wisdom that will be your prophets. And all of it can be used. All of it can be used. Because you can profit off these teachings in the biggest way. It's called not struggling anymore. That to me is the biggest win you will ever have. Okay, it's called not struggling anymore, no matter what happens to you. So let me clarify, no matter what happens to you, you don't struggle anymore. That's different. It doesn't, I'm not saying that things don't happen, right? I mean, I can explain them, I get them, I see why they're happening, I get it. I mean, I can help with this all day long. But even if you can't see like I see, because I'm on the other side, even if you can't see that, okay, no matter what. Wouldn't you rather be at peace no matter what happens to you? No matter what happens. Sooner or later, you're going to realize you're everything. You can predict the future. You can see what's happening before it happens. You'll understand every second of your existence. That's coming if you don't have it yet. But until you have that clarity, that peace, that, that total understanding of how cause and effect work and how you are first cause of everything, until you have that clarity so down deep that you can predict your future, until then, you can practice this. You can practice using your emotions to pull things out of thin air. You will join us on the next Heart Brain Coherence Challenge. Okay? You'll join us on the next one. You're going to tap into that emotional power that allows you to pull things out of thin air.
because your brain doesn't know the difference. And that's what that story was about. Your blind father has no clue unless you tell it. And whatever you feel is real, that's what you see. And that is the most important, most obvious glaring thing that our brain is designed to miss. It's so obvious we can't see it. All right? All right, so I hope you enjoyed that story. I, I didn't go into it in too much detail. You guys can read it on your own. Um, you guys might know the gist of the story. You might have heard it. I just wanted to give you my take on why this story means so much. I hope you appreciate it. I hope you understand it. I'm going to continue these series because I am passionate. I am passionate of you recovering your power based on the fact that you understand the manual for what it's for and don't treat it like the surface level crap that you're being taught out in the world. Okay? Don't do that. All of your power comes from understanding and applying these words. And then there's going to be a moment in your life, I swear to God, you're going to say, hey, I think this is the part of the story I wrote. This was my contribution. And you're going to recognize it because you're living those words. And when you do that, you will finally understand that you are God. Everyone is. There is nothing else in this world. But life only makes sense from this perspective. That's what the manual's for. So let's learn how to use it. Let's stop bashing it. And let's dive deep into our understanding. Yes? Thank you, guys. <laughs>